back way back. For hire. Father Lady had disappeared. 
I saw a light in the rectory, so I went upstairs and rang the bell. He came to the door in his shirt sleeve. He just stood there for a minute looking at me. Then he motioned me inside. You want to see me, Father? Yes. Be here. Sit down. The kid, Father. Little Jake. What do you think? Yeah. He goes fast? Instantly. I'll get the guy, Father. I'm not asking that, Patsy. I'm not asking you for anything anymore. Unless I need trouble. No, somebody told you a bad story, Father. That wasn't my gun. I should have known better than to call you. I should have known it meant trouble. It's your middle name, Patsy. You're married to it. You're looking at the wrong man. It wasn't my party. My call you here tonight to ask you a favor, Patsy. Anything you want, Father. It's too late now. We were going to have an outer boy picnic tomorrow over at Paradise Cove. I wanted to borrow one of your boats. We won't be going now, Patsy. We've got a funeral instead. Yeah. What do you want me to say? Don't say anything, Patsy. Just listen for a minute. I asked you to come up here tonight, but I didn't tell you to bring your friends. If you've got any private fights for those waterfront hoods, that's your business. But don't bring your beast into the church. And I tell you, I never saw the guy before. I don't know anything about it. He was shooting at you when he hit little jerk, wasn't he? What else am I supposed to think? Yeah. They find the murder gun? Nothing will so you can leave, Patsy. I like you better without the temper, Father. And I like you better before your hands got dirty, Patsy. I warned you about that waterfront crowd, the cheap thugs, the cheap women. I told you, Patsy, roll around in dirt long enough and some of it's bound to stick to you. You've got it all over your face and your hands and it's working inside you, Patsy. It's working in deep. That's the end of the sermon, Father. I tried to warn you, but you had to figure. So figure this one, Patsy. There's a nine-year-old kid on his way to the morgue. He stepped in front of a bullet and saved your life. Now go ahead. Figure it. Yeah, I will, Father. But you better be on call when I catch up with the guy. He's going to have a lot of praying to do. When I left Father Lazy, I slipped in at the church for one more look around. A couple of red-faced Irish cops in uniform were wandering around the vestibule, trying to look at home and chewing gum like mad to kill the beer on their desk. And over in one corner, half a dozen old women had their heads together, clucking like hens over a square egg. Outside of them, the place was deserted. I gave the course a quick rundown. A couple of hours over, where I figured the dentist had must have passed, I picked up a matchbook. The ad on the front said, Match Joint, Cicero, Illinois. And there was a phone number scrawled inside the cover. I was just about ready to toss it away when a bell rang, and I took a closer look. It was my phone number. I put the matchbook in my pocket, and I started home for the apartment. Maybe the cab wasn't going fast enough because halfway there, three years' stock of headache caught up with me and the ceiling started to jump. Oh, the cab driver was kind, though. When we got to my place, he offered to help me with five of curb for an extra four bits. By the time I made it to my front door, I was feeling lower than any man of an Irish wake. <laughs> the reception committee didn't help much. They were short and dark, all three of them, with rows of loose, oily fat where their necks should have been and Small pig eyes that squinted through the cigar smoke rolling out of wide nostrils and up their faces. Hi, Ann Nelson. How do you feel? Lots better after you find the door. Hey, Jack. Novak don't like it. He'll cultivate it, Dave. No, they don't build stomachs that strong. Stay <laughs> nice. It's easier that way. Now, look, Buster, I don't know who you three pigs are. Novak. <laughs> Remember, be nice. Yeah, I remember. You know, West Coast punks are all alike, Novak. A couple of cats and you cry. Ain't that right, Lud? Maybe Novak's tired, fellas. Up and into a chair. Yeah, Novak. Sit down. <laughs> Lud wants to say something. It's hard to say and get out of here. We want the gun, Novak. And we want the papers that go with it. Sounds like a great puzzle. Sorry, I can't help with the answer. You better tell Lud, Novak. It's liable to get rough. It's all right. My gun's over there in the desk, and the paper's on the wall. Be nice, Novak. Just once more, Novak. Where's the gun, and where's the papers? Look, I'll spell it for you. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. Jack, Mac, get his arm. Yeah. All right, hold his arm. Yeah. Okay, like that. Is this the way they do it in Cicero? <laughs> Last time round, Novak. 
The gun and the papers. Where are they? I don't know. <coughs> the gun, no back. The papers. No use, boss. We lost them. All right. It's a big floor. Let him find his own way back. <laughs> When I woke up, the sun was bleeding through a rip in the blinds, and there was a funny smell in the room. My stomach felt like a piece of practice rope at a Boy Scout class. And then the room got noisy. You wake up slow, Novak. Have a hard night? Oh, we're never on time for the party, are you, Norman? I'm choosy, Novak. I don't like your friend. All right, then take up social work. What's the occasion? I got a phone tip. Thought I'd drop up for a visit. You having fun? Yeah. There's a gal in the kitchen bored to death. Huh? Take a look. Hard. Who is she? Sally Kimball. That's what her driver's license says. Your friend of yours? How did I know? Even her mother couldn't tell. Nice stuff, isn't she, Novak? Must have been a rough party. I wouldn't know, Helen. I closed early. It's your joint. What happened? I said I closed early. Three gunsels were drinking my scotch when I got home about 10.30. They were anxious about a gun and some papers, and they figured I could put them straight. I couldn't, so they laid me out. Now tell me how sorry you are. I bleed for you, Novak. Now let's have it straight. That's as straight as you're going to get it, Hellman. If it's not exciting enough, try Esquire. He's off brave for a punk in hot water. I'm not going to scream until it burns. Then you better start practicing, Novak, because I'm going to burn you. You better hurry, Hellman. Your pension's catching up with you. Watch your mouth, Novak. You're not talking to your gentle friend. Now that's hard to tell, Hellman. You both use the same technique. Now show me the warrant before I start charging your rent. That dame's body is all the warrant I need, Novak. Now talk. How did she get so dead? I told you once. Pick up the three gunsels and ask them what they look like. Like you, a size smaller. They're from the east around Chicago. What else? They wouldn't leave their birth certificate. Go ahead, smart boy. Get in all the laughs you can. But don't ask me to con the parole board for you. Oh, I don't know, Helman. You won't be there. Maybe I like prison life. <laughs> left with the body, and I grabbed a handful of aspirin and a cold shower. Then I started out to look for the only honest guy I know, an ex-doctor and a boozer by the name of Jocko Madigan. A pretty smart man until he found out you can poison your worries at four dollars a fifth. I finally found him sitting in the middle of a bourbon fog in a little Spanish joint somewhere on the edge of the Excelsior district. He was down at the end of the bar trying his best to make time with a plaster box of Queen Isabella. <laughs> Just in time for a short one. Bartender, hand me that vein. Come on, Jocko. Sober up. I got to talk to you. Trusty. Here's to your own peculiar brand of happiness. Jocko, will you cut it out? Trusty, I don't mean to be rude or ungentlemanly, but I don't think I altogether approve of the clientele in this place. Well, yeah. this woman next to me, Patsy, the one with the stony gaze, she's been here ever since I came in. And I, I don't mean to be uncharitable, but I think she's the picture of a perfect boy. All right, all right. Patsy, to a member of the old Castilian school, there can be no excuse for the conduct she's exhibited. Why, do you know I was even good enough to buy her three rounds of Portuguese brandy? Imported, mind you. But what do I get for my pain? Not even a civil thank you. All right, Jocko. I've been sitting here in the most gentlemanly way, sipping this delicate nectar in great mouthfuls and trying to keep the party going. But does she help? No. I talked to her about politics, medicine, literature, feet, Byron, Shelley, Nick Kenny. I even talked about the weather. Jocko, she's a statue. She's a... Oh, uh, a simple oversight, Patsy. Might happen to anyone. Listen a minute, will you? I'm in trouble. You're always in trouble, Patsy. And that's the way you stay till you find some kind of moral brother. You've got to find direction instead of trying to be so righteous in an evil sort of way. Get in tune with our decaying civilization, like me, Patsy. Why tempt the fates? It's much more practical to buy off your destiny with a good fit of Irish whiskey. You are so, Jocko? Yes. Uh, what kind of trouble this time? Three gentles from the east are shooting up the town and I'm running front for their murder rap. Perhaps you are not plead guilty. The rest might do you good. Somebody shot a nine-year-old kid, an older boy. Oh. Where did that happen? In Father Lady's church. The judge was took me for somebody else and started shooting. Problem's getting bigger, Patsy. What am I supposed to do? I want you to check on a guy by the name of Mike Quinlan. Also a girl, Sally Kimbrough. Tagged by the examiner in the Chronicle Morgue and made around the horse parlors out on Eddie Street, will you? 
Find out everything you can. Well, all right, Patsy, but you've broken up a beautiful party. You've disillusioned me about Queen Isabella here, and I've suddenly grown dreadfully thirsty again. Let's have four or five for the road, shall we? Later, Jocko, when we time. Well, only if you say so, Patsy. But every time I leave the hallowed confines of a bar room, I'm a poor pilgrim caught up in the vices of the crass everyday world. A tattered orphan leaning disconsolately against the bitter winds of chance, tossed and buffeted about endlessly by the cruel storms of fortune. By the way, I need car fare. All right, here, half a buck. But Patsy, refresh me. Later, you know, get going, will you, Jocko? Where can I find you? I'm going to check by my office, and I'm going to see Father Lady. Well, as soon as he mentions taking the pledge, that's your cue to leave. Good night, lover. When I left Jocko, I caught a cab downtown, and on the way, I started hunting for just a piece of the answer. But all I got was questions. Who were the three gunfuls, and what was the stuff they were after? Mike Quinlan, where did he fit in? And that dead girl in my apartment, who did she belong to? Then the zeros were piling up faster than flies on donuts when the cab pulled up for a stop sign at 16th and Mission, and a little guy with a worried mouth and a loud sports shirt jumped in. His lips were wound around a phony kind of smile like a head waiter just before he hands you the check for a big party. <laughs> it's okay, driver, we're friends. <laughs> Oh, you wasn't for Sandell? That's as good a name as any. All right, here's your corner. Sally Kimbrell. Where is she, Novak? You're fast with a question, mister. Let me ask you one. Who's Sandell? I got the gun, Novak. Yeah, but who's Sandell? I'll do the asking. You sit there and make the answer. Well, you're running out of tickets, Junior. Come here. <laughs> All right, now reach down for that gun and I'll jam you through the floorboards. Who's Sandell? The Chicago hood. He's out to get me. It works both ways. That's a good plot. Now, who are you? Mike Quinlan. All right, now what about Sally Kimbrough? They mopped her up off my kitchen floor this morning. Somebody's going to get Sandell. Maybe we're on the same train. What's he look like? Fat men all look alike. All right, you can leave any time now. Sure, Novak. Fair's getting high. See you later. Derby on a pogo stick. So I went back to the corner where Quinn was still hugging the cement. He was draped over the curb like a tired carpet. And if his suit was a brighter yellow, he could have passed for a loading zone. Hellman was there with all his relatives in uniform, so I told the cabbie to drive on. I just couldn't seem to shake the picture a little Jake when he went quiet in that shirt. Well, when I got close to a phone, I paid off the cabbie and I put in a call to Jocko. I called Newton at the examiner morgue, and he said the jocko had just left, so I called Bruni. I asked for the guy who was drinking the cheapest whiskey in the tallest glass. Jocko Madison speaking. This is Novak. How'd you make out? Let me tell you about these massive newspaper men down here. Men of high birth and fashion. Well, I'm going to tell you about the newspaper men. Well, what about it? They like Scotch almost as much as I do. What'd you find out about Quinlan? My Eddie Street informant tagged him as an ex-contact. Sent up for armed robbery in 1940 and paroled about two weeks ago from Joliet. Quinlan had a few dealings with a man named Matt Sandell. From what I can gather, Quinlan's supposed to have taken the rap with Sandell and his brother. What else? Quinlan's a local boy out of Fernal Heights. He has a sister, Patsy. She belongs to Sandell. She's probably the only sales girl in town with a six-room apartment in the best part of the marina. You get the address? Bayview Towers, down at the foot of Fillmore Street. Sounds good. Maybe she has a friend. Did you get anything else on Sandell? The Turk Street set tells me he's out here to set up a slot machine route. I gather he's the pushy type. Thanks, Jocko. I'll see you at the apartment. Oh, Patsy, on your way home, pick up something for dinner at the delicatessen, will you? There's stuff in the icebox. Fix yourself a sandwich. Patsy, dinner without bourbon is life without hope. I'll uh, borrow from the neighbors. Good night, lover. When 
I hung up, I caught a bee car out on Van Ness Avenue, and I headed down into the marina. The answer box was still stuck with questions, and little Jake Stiller held a four-lap lead, but at least the field was getting thin. I figured it was one out of three. Sandell or either one of his gentles, but which one? Well, when I got down to the foot of Fillmore Street, the fog was thicker than ankles of the fat lady's convention, and the fog horns out beyond Yacht Harbor started on overtime. The Bayview Towers was one of those fancy, new-looking places that gets old in a hurry. It saw lots of brass and brunettes during the war, but now the only uniform left belonged to the doorman. I found Quinlan's sister in the penthouse apartment. And as she opened the door, she felt like Clyde B. with a broken chair. Her laundry pajamas reminded you of a good butler. They came in and went out at the right places and then stayed close to the job. I felt like the fifth boy after somebody blew out his candle. Fine. Oh, talent on the loose. Want you come in? Yeah, three times. My name's Novak. I got some news for you. I'm Bobby Quinlan. Don't go so far. I'm looking for answers, ladies. If you want a companion, advertise. Your brother's dead. Sandell shot him. My, such a big imagination, Mr. Novak. Why don't you relax? Yes. Look, I got proof in my pocket, baby. You want the rest of this couch now? Yes, Mr. Novak. It's going to get worse with your brother gone. Take a look at the paper. Look. Yeah, you've been practicing. You're getting a little past you. I can feel your heart pounding. Yeah, now let's quiet down and talk murder, Colin. You're hurting. You're hurting me. Where's Sandell? My Where's Sandell? Where is he? In my arm, you'll break it. Tear it off and throw it away. Now, where's Sandell? I don't know. I swear I don't. He killed your brother. He shot him down on the street. Just don't you dare know that. All right, if you won't believe me, take a look at this chronicle. Right there on the front page. You're lying, Nova. Look at it. No. Sandell's gone. Thomas, he wouldn't touch Mike. Why complain? Think how Mike feels. Now, where's Sandell? He's down at the hotel. The Durban arms on it. He's... He lied to me, Novak. I played it straight, but he lied to me. Yeah, you're a mistake, baby. I'll see you later. Don't leave, Novak. Why did you do it? You lied. You and Sandell, you promised me. And you killed him. Like that order boy, huh? Got it once, you know, back it's tough for the second time. There's no second time yet. <laughs> all right, all right, sweetheart. Now take him back. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You're finished even, baby. I'm a kid. I feel lost. You stand there. It's so nice to die. Oh. 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 Sorry, baby, you make this trip alone. There wasn't anything I could do for them, so I took a cab down to the Durban Arms on Eddy Street, but Sandell had checked out an hour before. The clerk told me his baggage was still around, though, so I figured that could only mean one thing. I put in a call for Hellman, and then I grabbed the cab and headed for Father Lazy's. By the time I got up on the hill, a fog had taken a leap on most of the town. You can always tell when it's sick because all the sounds out in the bay get a free ride. Halfway there, the driver was ready to quit, but for an extra two bucks, he threw the cab in second and we crawled the rest of the way till we got a block from the church. By that time, the fog was so thick you could have sold it for the pound. I did the last block on foot. I was just about 20 yards away when I spotted Sandell and Max the Gentle standing under a street light just outside the door to the church. They waited a minute, and then they turned and started up the steps. Don't bother, Sandell. You called too late. Huh? Who is it? Who's out there? It's a spark for us, Lord Novak. Novak. Come closer. I can't see you in the fog. Go on out and get me, Sandell. There he is, man. You're flying blind, Sandell. You made the trip for nothing. I got the gun and I got the papers. He's lying, lot. Come on out, Novak. Deal. I said you're late, Sandell. I already made the deal with Matt. You're funny, Novak. This will shut you up. Not even close, Max. Which one have you got the order, boy? You sound worried, Novak. You want to tell him lot or should I? Max deals a lot better than you shoot, Sandell. Ask him about it. Huh? What you saying, Max? He's saying nothing, lot. He's talking crazy. Let's go out and get him. Ask Mac about this afternoon, Sandell. Ask him where he was when Jack got it. Ask him how I got the gun and the papers. He's crazy, lad. Uh, 
Not so sure, Mac. Don't be a sucker, love. No, Mac, where's you? Sorry, Mac, you took the chance. He's caught in your lighting wire. Good day, Max, but I can't chance. Oh, oh. All right, Sandell. Now it's just you and me in the fog. Come on in, though. Thanks for working here. Come in where I can see you. All right. That's five shots, Lud. You got one left to make good on. No, I like stand down for even. Come here. Not me. Come now. No, you are no bad. What did I do to you? Get it out with him. You didn't get hurt. Talk to that older boy, huh? I didn't mean to hit the kid. Oh, I'm sick of your mouth. <laughs> All right, no back. That's enough. No back. I said that's enough. Yeah. Let go of him. Candell? Yeah, I see. A few minutes ago, we could have booked him for murder. You can have him now, Helmut. Yeah. Save the state some money, Novak. Nick's broken. That's you, Patsy? Over here, Father. On the step. Hello, Inspector. Father? This the man, Patsy? Grandfather, that's him. I'll pray for him, Patsy. Why are we so, Father? It wasn't worth it. They said the same thing about two men on a hill in Calgary.